Welcome to our lecture online to get a better conceptual understanding of the transmission coefficient and the probability of a particle making it through a barrier let's compare what an electron would do and what a proton would do if they had the same energy so let's say for example that both the electron and the proton had an energy of 10 electron volts and they're trying to get through a barrier where the potential of the barrier is 20 electron volts so here's the transmission coefficient in a more simplified version presuming that alpha is much much larger than one I believe that will be the case in in this example here so how do we compare the two well notice if E over V is a um, is a factor of 1 over 2 and we calculate what this is equal to for our example we then get 16 times 1 half times 1 minus 1 half which is also a half so a half times a half times 16 that's equal to 4 so this portion of the equation is simply a constant equal to 4 and if this is a very large or very small number in this case if this is a very small number then of course the 4 doesn't even matter we can simply say that in the simplified version t would be approximately equal to e to the minus 2 alpha l and we can just forget about the factor in front if that's a small number compared to uh, if that's an insignificant number compared to what we see over there all right next we need to look at the exponent here since it's a negative exponent that's the same as 1 over e to the positive exponent which means if this exponent is large this becomes a very small quantity now l is the distance or the width of the barrier and so therefore that's a fixed number for a particular example so the only thing that can change then is the alpha and the alpha is the exponential decay constant that describes how the how the probability will decline as the barrier is wider and wider now it's calculated according to this equation right here and notice that since in both example or in both cases the proton and electron have the same energy the V minus E is the same in both H bar is the same in both so the only difference here is the mass of the particle and since the mass of a proton is much bigger than the mass of an electron alpha will be a much bigger number for the proton than for an electron if alpha is a bigger number then this quantity here will be smaller therefore a smaller transmission coefficient and therefore a smaller probability to make it through the barrier but in other words a proton will not nearly as likely make it to the barrier compared to an electron simply because it has a bigger mass if it has a bigger mass it has a smaller wavelength and it's less likely to get through uh, to get through the barrier so we're going to work it out in our example we set the energy equal to 10 electron volts the potential of the barrier 20 electron volts and the distance across the barrier 100 picometers so 100 times 10 to the minus 12 meters so let's see what the transmission coefficient will be for the proton and for the electron so for the proton the transmission coefficient is going to be equal to the square root of we already have two times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 that's the mass of the proton the difference is 10 electron volts and of course we have to convert that to joules 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and divide the whole thing by h divided by 2 pi that's h bar so let's see what we get uh, so we end up with 2 times 1.67 e to the 27 minus times 10 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus take the square root of that multiply that times 2 and times pi and divide by Planck's constant which is 6.626 e to the 34 minus and that gives us a result of 6.93 times 10 to 11 so this is 6.93 times 10 to the 11 so now when we try to find the transmission coefficient that would be equal to 4 times e to the minus 2 times 6.93 times 10 to the 11th and assuming I didn't make any mistakes punching the calculator and L would be uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 10th that's the same as 100 times 10 to the minus 12th and let's see what that's equal to so multiply this times 1 e to the 10 minus times 2 equals that's a negative and use the exponent so that's a pretty big number wow 
a huge number. Let me try that again just to make sure I did that right. 6.93 e to the 11th times 1 e to the 10 minus. That's uh, 69.3 times 2. Make that a negative. And the probability is virtually zero. So I would say that the transmission coefficient is almost equal to zero for a proton. All right. For the same situation, an electron, let's go ahead and calculate that. So an electron, uh, the alpha is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 10, the conversion to joules, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and the whole thing divided by h, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, and divide that by 2 pi. All right, so let's do the same here. 2 times 9.11 e to the 31 minus, times 10, times 1.6 e to the 19 minus, take the square root of that, times 2, times pi, and divide by 6.626 e to the 34 minus. And we have a much smaller alpha in this case. Again, smaller alpha means a larger t, and therefore a larger probability of making it through the barrier. So we have alpha is equal to 1.62 times 10 to the 10th, and therefore the transmission coefficient is going to be 4 times e to the minus 2 times 1.62 times 10 to the 10th, and 1 times 10 to the minus 10 for the distance through the barrier. So times 1 e to the 10 minus. We multiply that times 2. And notice we end up with t is equal to 4 times e to the minus 3.238. 3.238. And notice that's not an unusually uh, small number. So we put a negative in front and take the exponent of that and times 4, and notice a much better transmission coefficient and probability of 0 0.157. So transmission coefficient means that 0.157% of the particles, or I should say 0.157 compared to 1, or 15.7% of the particles will make it through the barrier, and the rest of the particles will be uh, push back, will not make it through the barrier, and simply get reflected off the barrier, or make it through the barrier partway and come back after they come, after they hit the second portion of the barrier, the far, the far wall of the barrier. But I would say that most of the particles will probably get reflected here. Some will ref be reflected there or stop because the energy doesn't make it all the way through. And a small percentage of particles will make it through if they're electrons, and virtually none will make it through if they're protons. So there is a good example to see what the difference is between protons and electrons. Again, when the particles become relatively large, there's a much smaller probability they'll make it through a barrier. If the particles are very small, there's a much greater probability. So how do large particles re leave the nucleus in a nuclear decay? Well, they have to make it through the barrier. There's a potential barrier there. And so therefore, like alpha particles or beta particles that need to make it through have to have a very large energy to smash through the barrier. And we'll show you some examples of how to do that in the next few videos. That's how it's done.